CS1501 and welcome to week nine. Over the next two weeks, we're going to talk more about industry practices and software. We thought this week it'd be important to talk to you about Agile and Scrum, which are kind of to simplify it, just software processes that a lot of industry professionals will use. Okay, so a software process is just a sequence of activities to create a software system. So to name some that I'll go into later, there's Scrum and Waterfall and more. Basically, it's just a fancy way of saying it's a methodology that you follow. So there's a lot of different th factors that go into how to choose a process. First, you want to think like, what is your team like? Are they all working together? Is it a large team? Like, how does the team communicate? Um, are they like super collaborative or do they like to do like their own stuff at first, things like that. And then also, what is the project requirements? When does the project need to be done by? And how often will those pro project requirements change? There are several other factors, but we're just kind of going over the, um, the basic layer for this video. So disclaimer, um, I will be describing popular software processes in the lecture, but a lot of teams in the real world don't follow the process perfectly. They'll pick and choose attributes that work best with the team. So just to kind of give you an overview of what it used to be like, um, there was a software process called Waterfall. And if you look at the photo on the right, you'll kind of see like, why it just kind of goes, it flows down. So this was, um, this is older, typically more when uh, software used to come out in a box. So um, it's about just like completing one phase before the next, uh, producing a document to define like what to do at the start of each phase and creating a document at the end of the stage with like requirements documents or just code, but you cannot go back to the previous phase. If you kind of think about it a little bit, you can see where maybe for a like a year long project, this can go wrong. You can have a customer come up to you and go, hi, I want this software right here. And then if you go into your like deep dark coding cave for a whole year and you come out with that exact software, chances are the market's changed, the customer's needs have changed. And especially in the CS field, the technology has probably changed. So we've, um, we've been like the software industry kind of trying to go through more um, iterative uh, processes. So two uh, common categories are plan driven and agile. So plan driven is the idea of you have a plan that you start with. Um, you have a plan that you start with and you keep that in mind and you don't do as often check-ins, but you'll check in every once in a while and um, every once in a while, probably like more about like weekly, just to make sure you're like you're staying on track um, if and then adjusting if there needs to be anything changed. This is good for projects where the requirements are less to change and it's better for less experienced programmers and team members because there is more structure to it. Agile is good for projects where requirements can frequently change, and it's also great for programmers who are very collaborative. So Scrum is a type of um, Agile process. So um, Scrum was created in the mid-90s by Southern Sutherland and Swaber. It's all about simplicity, constant feedback, and sprint iterations that always have a shippable project. So some keywords before we um, go look at an example. A sprint is a period of time to set a small set of goals leading to a potential submittable project. Usually this is about two to four weeks, but again, variable depending on the team. The scrum master is the person assigned to keep the team focused on its goals. So this can either be like a lead engineer or a project manager or simply someone on the team that they've designated. Daily Scrum is just a daily meeting to communicate their process and day plan for their work. It's only about 15 minutes. You want to keep this pretty short because you are doing this every day. Something that 
is a little bit different, but you'll probably also hear is a daily stand up. This is a meeting where you literally stand up and you'll update others on your progress, um, any struggles that you're having and what do you hope to get accomplished for the day. The reason it's called a daily stand up is because you are physically standing up to ensure that the meeting will be as short as possible. If you're all sitting down lounging in some nice leather office chairs, you'll probably get a little comfy, not mind it too much. But if you're standing up, you're gonna wanna eventually like sit down. Okay, and then a sprint review is a retrospective at the end of the sprint to reflect on any struggles. So it's kind of like recapping like, how did it go? What can we do better? Things like that. All right, so this is an example of the Scrum framework. So right here, we'll look over here. This is the product backlog. So this is essentially um, in the beginning of your project, you kind of think big picture, like what needs to be done? And you'll, you'll write it down in like bits and pieces. Then before, um, before each sprint, you'll, you'll obviously you'll print, you'll plan your sprint and you'll take whatever pieces from the product backlog that you feel like you can accomplish in that two to four week time period. And that goes into your sprint backlog. Okay, then you have your, uh, your scrum team um, that meets every day for their daily scrum to make sure they're staying up to date um, and catching up on their work. Um, and they'll just keep working for those two to four weeks. And then you'll have a sprint review. This sprint review is where you'll be checking to see whether or not you've accomplished your goals. Um, if you haven't, do you need to extend it? Um, and then just making sure you're staying on track. Then um, the reason that this kind of goes into increment and goes into the box is because technically at this point, you should have maybe not the finished project, probably not the finished project, but you should have something um, that is at least minimally viable. So you don't wanna ever stop like right in the middle of something where your, your product would not work. You wanna make sure you kind of build up to it and keep adding like new features each time. Um, and then this is a sprint retrospective. So this is again, where you're going to think like, what went well, what went wrong? Um, is there anything we need to change for the next sprint? And then you go back into planning, you go to your project ba uh, product backlog, pick whatever requirements you want to put in your sprint backlog. And again, for that sprint, you're gonna keep iterating, keep iterating, keep iterating. So again, like why I mentioned that like, this is good for like requirements that have to change. If you notice like, yes, you do have that product backlog, but it can change and that's okay because you are constantly checking it every two to four weeks. Okay. Some other like commonly found agile practices to kind of bring over is uh, to bring up is test driven development. So it's really important to make sure that you have tests for your whole code. We talked about this a little bit in week seven when you test your code, it's easier because you know like what's supposed to be working. So a lot of people, um, if they practice like agile practices, they'll create the test first and then start coding and they'll keep coding um, to make sure that their test runs right. Um, product backlog is just having a storage of requirements that you constantly come back to and you'll change as needed. Small releases, so this um, this is for, this is what I was talking about where you wanna make sure you have something to kind of ship out each time. The iterative development, if you notice like that, like that cycle that we had, that's an iteration. We keep going back and back and back and back and we keep constantly improving and improving and improving. Uh, daily meetings, again, it's just really nice to kind of collaborate and make sure everyone's like staying up to date and having that daily check-in. And then pair programming. This might be something um, if you've experienced it in your intro classes, but it's just the concept of sitting with a partner and coding on one screen. You have a driver and you have a navigator. Some may think this is kind of inefficient because instead of having two coders, you're essentially having one. But the argument for this is with paired programming, that's another check to make sure you don't have bugs. And if you find the bugs earlier in the code, then it saves you more money in the long run. If you think about it, um, finding a bug right then and there as you're writing it, that's quick. You, you backspace, you fix the bug, it's all fine. 
but imagine that you are coding, um, you maybe you create a bug, you don't realize it, you keep coding some more, and then you submit your pull request, and then you have to wait until another team member, probably a week, like a couple days later, uh, reviews your code, reviews that pull request, and they find, oh, hey, there is this bug in the code. And by that point, you've already written code on top of that, that builds on top of that, and you have to take more time to go ahead and edit that. And time is money. If you wanna look at um, more agile practices, um, I've included a link right here, but these are a couple examples of what you'll find on your weekly assignment. But other than that, that is it. That's just a short overview. If you're interested, please look up the 12 Pillars of the Agile Manifesto and research more of these software processes on your own. They're a great way to learn uh, about different like team styles. But then always keep in mind that what you read online may not be the same thing as the industry. And industry professionals often choose what works best for their team, their people, and that's just one of the skills you'll learn um, as you gain that experience. Okay, I look forward to seeing your guys' work on the weekly activity this week, and I will see you next week. Bye.